Hey guys, Christine Morrell here. Today, I was asked, what's the magic pill? What's the one thing that you've done for you to be able to build a profitable music career? How'd you travel the world? How'd you do all these things? I'm going to talk to you guys about that today. Let's go. All right, so everyone's looking for like one magic pill you know, this is the one thing you do. This is how you do it. This is how you make money. This is how you build a career, even if you don't have a manager and record label and all that kind of good stuff. And I was asked, what's that one thing? And I know that you guys want me to be like, I contacted this one person or I went on this one website or I did this one thing and everything blew up. But it wasn't that. The main thing, the main, main thing, like alert, alert, is that I just took action. That was all. Um, at the end of the day, it's not like the most talented person or the smartest person or anything like that that wins. It's the person that just like keeps going and keeps going. And um, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I've never taught anything that's like rocket science. Like I'm not like Elon Musk. I'm not putting like rocket ships in outer space. I show you guys like, hey, this is how you reach out to Spotify curators. Here's the steps. One, two, three. But how many of you have actually done it? I've shown you this is how you submit to Spotify playlisters, or this is how you, you know, get your um, music copyrighted. This is how you, you know, reach out to other collaborators so that you can, you know, cross promote your music. But how many of you guys have actually done it? I've shown you how I've, you know, made money building funnels instead of, you know, sending my fans to funnels instead of to Spotify, and you know how to create those, you know, different money making machines. But how many of you guys have done it? I've shown you guys how to book paid shows. I've shown you how to reach out to agencies. I've even shown you the websites where you can submit to book, to perform on cruise ships or to perform on casinos or to perform in bands. Yet how many of you have actually done it? What people really don't know is like, I mean, turn on the radio. Is it the most talented people that are there? No, it's the people that did a certain type of work and they did the certain things that needed to be done. If you go to a casino and you, you know, check out the stages, is it the most talented people that are on those stages? No, it's not. You know, it's the people that were willing to do the work. There's so many of you that are so freaking talented that just ha aren't willing to just do it. If you go to my YouTube channel, I cover like so much. It's all there for you. Like there's no like rocket scientist or mathematical equation or you know whatever you don't have to do any trigonometry or calculus or anything it's literally just like do this do this do this most of you are not doing it the only reason that i was ever able to create some sort of a career really was just because i was willing to do the work i'm willing to learn what to do and then do it that's it learn what to do and then do it and sometimes i really just think that it's like we create our own walls, you know, we create our own things that are holding us back. Maybe it's that voice inside of you that's saying you're not good enough or that voice inside of you that's saying you're not ready. Guys, you're never ready. You're never ready. My first album was like a shit album because the music is terrible. Like I don't even sell that album. I took it down off. I did. It's so bad. I recorded it on like a $500 little like studio where you like press the button to hit record. Like that's how old I am. So it's like, and then I recorded it in um, uh, like a, a closet. There was like a microphone hanging down from a nail. I literally had a nail and put the microphone over the nail and then that's how I would record. So the microphone would just kind of dangle there. It was, it was ridiculous. Um, but I was willing to go out and sell it. That's the only difference. There was people with, with way better quality music, with way better everything, presentation, more resources. You know, I come from a little farm in New Mexico uh, where nobody does music and I didn't know anybody and I'm literally, you know, a lot of you guys know my story. I literally raised pigs and stuff. Yet how did I come so far? Just willing to do the work, just willing to get started. And um, if there's something in, you know, if it's a personal, like, it's, you know, listen to those voices. What are the voices that you are listening to and what? how are you speaking to yourself? Because if you're speaking to yourself and saying like, hey, I'm not good enough, hey, I'm not, you know, whatever enough or I'm not ready, maybe you're right. Okay, consider that. But a lot of you do have music. Like maybe you're saying I'm not ready because you know you need to record some music. And yes, that's that's you know um, logical. But some of you have recorded music already, or you already have the talent. You could already be booking shows. You know, there's so many opportunities in front of you, and you're just too scared, or you just are telling yourself you know the wrong things. And um, so uh, you know, just a big thing that I always think about is like I remember my very first uh, gig that I ever got, where I got booked paid shows. 
and it was in Hollywood, and I got booked at a place called Renaissance Hotel. It's right there on Hollywood and Highland, if any of you guys live in LA, right in the middle of Hollywood, beautiful hotel. And um, I wasn't ready, and they asked me to come and audition for a gig, and I knew one song. I only knew one stinking song, but you had to perform for three hours. Um, but they were going to start, pay, starting pay was going to be like 200 bucks a night plus tips. And I was like, whoa, that's so much money. If I could make that much money, I'd be rich. You know, and it was a five night a week gig. I showed up even though I wasn't ready. I knew one song and I played the shit out of that one song. And it was Amy Winehouse Rehab. You know, they tried to make me go to rehab. I said, no, no, no. And I did that song and they hired me. And they said, okay, start in two weeks. So I worked my ass off and I learned all kinds of songs. And two weeks later, I was performing and it led to so many other things and literally has led me, you know, that was, gosh, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years ago, has led me down this amazing, you know, path. That was the very first gig that I took and I took it even though I wasn't ready. And um, I wouldn't have had, you know, who knows what my future would have, have held for me, but that led to one thing which led to me doing stuff for, I remember my very first uh, private show I did was for General Motors, you know, and then I did a thing for uh, Dancing with the Stars, like that was all because of me playing in this little lounge in Hollywood where sometimes there was only 10 people there. I remember one time I performed and there was someone from Wisconsin there and uh, they liked, you know, the way I sounded and they ended up being on the board for um, the colleges there. And so they hired me to fly out to Madison, Wisconsin and sing the national anthem in front of 17,000 people. Uh, it was amazing and those things wouldn't have happened. Imagine if I had been scared and not shown up and said, you know what, I'm not ready. Because the worst thing that's gonna happen is you show up at audition and they're gonna say, okay, no, that's the worst. But there's no possible way for them to say yes if you don't at least show up. Show up for that audition, put out that song, put out that album. Join that songwriting contest because the worst that's going to happen is you're not going to win. You're not going to get chosen. But see, if you don't try, the worst that's going to happen is that you'll never achieve your goals, is that you'll never make a living from your music or you'll never get your music out there and heard. Do you see the difference? Like that's a huge difference between like, hey, I may never, ever be heard ever in my entire life if I never put this out or they might tell me no. Do you see that's a huge difference? You don't want to go like your whole life going like, what if I had tried this? What if I had done that? You know, and some of you are like waiting. You're just like waiting because you're like, no, when the right time I'll do this. It's never the right time. And there was a big saying that I um, heard where they said tomorrow will be the word that like destroys all your dreams and destroys all your hopes because we always keep saying tomorrow I'm going to do it. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. If you want to do it, go do it right freaking now. Like that's what you need to do. And apart from even like achieving your dreams and apart from being on stages and stuff, I think what people don't realize also is like how you performing and just you being in your element, what that does to other people. Like I found that even when I was just singing and performing, I remember other singers coming up to me and being like, you know, I'm, I've always been so afraid. And just the fact that you're up here doing it, makes me not afraid anymore. I'm gonna go follow my dreams. And I remember thinking, wow, that's really cool. I never thought that that was gonna be a byproduct for me. I just like being on stage and dancing around and singing and stuff. That was even more powerful. That was even more powerful to have musicians and singers and stuff come up. But then even more powerful happened where, you know, now I'm on this stage and singing these songs. And um, I've told this story before, but I, I just, every time I tell it, it's just so, so powerful to me. And, um, I remember one time I was just singing. There was probably like six people in the crowd. There's not even like a lot of people there, but I was getting paid to be there, which was awesome. So I'm performing. And I remember this couple comes in and they have a little baby in their carriage. And I'm like, oh, how cute. So I'm still playing. And when they take the baby out of the carriage, I realize that the baby doesn't have any arms and doesn't have any legs. And the baby's just in their little, you know, cuddly little outfit and stuff. But it's, you can visibly see it doesn't have anything and um, no, no, you know, ligaments. And um, I don't remember what song I was playing. All I remember is, let's see, I'm gonna cry now. I just remember them dancing. And I remember being like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. And I sang and I just said, don't look at them, don't do anything because you're gonna, you're gonna run the moment for that.
And so I kept playing and I just remember seeing them, you know, holding each other and dancing. And I remember thinking, how cool is this that I get to do this? How cool is it that I get to play? How cool is it that I get to sing here? How cool is it that I get to be a part of their experience? How cool is it that they get to, you know, have this moment that maybe they wouldn't have had had I not been in this lobby? How Had I not shown up for that audition that I wasn't ready for? You know, and then how lucky am I that I get to then have this music move through me and then get to experience this and that this gift is coming through my blood and coming through my body and coming through my veins. This gift, and so many of you guys have these like gifts that you're not using and you're not getting to experience those things and you're not getting to you know, provide those experiences for other people. And it's the most amazing thing in the world and you don't even have to sing the best, you don't have to be the best at anything. Um, you just have to get started somewhere. And whenever I would do those types of things, it was like everything made sense. You wanna talk about purpose and you wanna talk about finding meaning in your life. Look, it's all great and dandy to make money and I'm all about it. You guys have seen my teachings, that's what I focus on. I focus on this is how you produce income because without making income, you can't continue to supplement your career, right? You can't continue to sustain your career because music videos are expensive. Producers are expensive. Marketing and promotion is expensive, right? You need that. But there's certain monetary needs and then there's like the bonuses that you can't measure, right? There's the things that are like, oh, you can't measure that feeling. No amount of money will buy that feeling. No amount of money will buy that for anybody and no amount of money will buy you purpose and no amount of money will buy you a reason to live none of that you know and and that just gives you so much meaning and it's just like i get it i get why i was given that i get why but so many of you are waiting for tomorrow you're waiting saying tomorrow 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 and you have these amazing voices and you have these amazing gifts or maybe your gift is to songwrite for other people or to ghost, you know, write for other rappers or whatever it is that you do or you play an instrument and you're scared to get on stage. You are depriving the world of that experience and you're depriving yourself of that experience. I would hope that no matter where you are, again, kind of, I go off on these tangents because I get so passionate about this stuff, but no matter where you are, really look at yourself and say, am I really not ready? Or am I just telling myself I'm not ready? Is there really some stuff that I gotta get done before I release that song? Or can I go ahead and release that song? You know, nothing's ever gonna be perfect. Never, Nothing's ever gonna be the exact perfect time or the right time. You're never gonna have all your ducks in the row. If you guys watch all my teachings, I'm the type of person, I jump in the water before I know how to swim. I jump off the building before I have a parachute and then I figure it out on the way down. You guys can do that and you guys can get started and you guys can share your music and I hope that no matter where you are, if you've been telling yourself those types of things, I have to have all this in line, I have to have all this stuff in line, but you really look at yourself and go, is that really the, the case or am I just scared? Am I just worried about what people are going to think? And, you know, again, just closing up and ending this out, there's not a magic way for you to reach your goals. There's not one thing that you do. There's just one general thing. That's just start. That's just take action. Start wherever you are. I started on that farm. I started with that terrible album that I recorded with the nail, with the microphone going over the nail. I started with no money. I started with absolutely, I started in a terrible community. I started where, you know, literally I got myself in all kinds of terrible stuff and situations and everything and, and you know, surrounded by bad people. I mean, just everything about what I was doing was bad. But I still had a destination. I had a vision of where I was going. And I just took action. And sometimes you detour and sometimes you take a wrong turn and sometimes you have to ask for directions and something. But if you at least just know where you're going, you can get there. So I would just hope that all of you will just take action. Just start. Stop telling yourself those things that aren't true and start sharing with the world what you have because those gifts are going to do some really, really amazing things. Things that you will have never, ever foreseen. Good luck, everybody. Bye.